If you're anything like me, you love a good villain. Like, they're the reason you're into the story. Oh, that's nice. Hero's journey, tragedy, and redemption, saving the world while finding yourself- WHO GIVES A SHIT YOU SEEING HOW MUCH BADASS IS ON THE SCREEN RIGHT NOW?! Well... Ugh, you deserve so much better. Meh, not the same. Anyways, if you like villains as much as me and you also happen to like platform fighters, that can be a bit of a problem, since there's a pretty good chance your favorite bloodthirsty killer got thrown into a sumo suit. And you are going to try and make it work. And, oh, you... you poor sweet child, that's probably a mistake. I'm Mock Rock, and today we're gonna look at... The Problem with Heavyweights. Right, heavyweights, so here's what we're gonna say. To be a heavyweight, you've gotta be heavy, you've gotta be big, and you've gotta be slow, even if you've got a quick thing or two in your kit. So in this case, a heavyweight's first defining trait outside of a literal heavyweight is that they're- Huge. And this is obviously a disadvantage. A bigger target is easier to hit, and I don't want to undersell the problem this causes. But I also don't think it's the be-all and end-all of a character, and there have been plenty of large targets that have been totally viable choices. Being large is a weakness, but it's a regular old weakness like any other, not some game-ending curse that you can never overcome. Got through that entire section without calling a single thing thick. NAILED IT! This brings us to mobility, which is where a MUCH bigger issue starts to rear its ugly head. In platform fighters, a character's strength isn't just determined by speed. Look, take your pick of an example. It's also not determined by damage output, which is why Zetterburn, for instance, isn't tearing up the rivals of Aether meta. No, in a similar vein to traditional fighting games, a character's power is largely determined by the options available to them. Either by having strong options in any situation, or incredibly strong options in certain situations. Or both, which is how we end up with this. Or this. Yeah, give characters weaknesses, please. A key difference, however, is the generally far higher mobility of platform fighters, making it a huge factor in actually creating your options. Mewtwo received many buffs over the lifetime of Smash 4, but the boost to his speed were astronomically more important than anything else. Suddenly, every single tool in his kit became available in more situations, which overall increases his options. A buff to mobility is a buff to every single move that a character has. And of course, equal and opposite reactions, Newton and all that, take mobility away and every single move gets worse instead. That's what he meant, right? That's how you can have something like Ganondorf's RIDICULOUS up smash and back air and still be a terrible character. Good luck actually bringing your super duper awesome hitboxes anywhere near the little brat buzzing around you like a fruit fly around boysenberries. I like boysenberries, the analogy works. Get off my back! So if Slowpoke Roger Gannon over there isn't getting much done, the natural question to ask would be, can you make a viable heavyweight? Yeah, of course, let's theorycraft one right now. Meet Radioactive Man! Radioactive Man has the recovery of Falco and the speed of Robin, so clearly needs some pretty good tools to increase his options. So naturally, we'll have his down B drop an unblockable nuke on the stage which KOs at 0%. BAM! Top tier heavyweight creative problem solved! Thanks for watching everyone, and hey, if you liked it, why not leave a like? Be sure to subscribe for more Smash- Yeah, fine, no one's actually buying this, we'll keep going. A better question would be, is it possible to create a REASONABLE heavyweight that's truly competitive? And the answer is yes, but it's really difficult and other companies have done a better job at it than Nintendo. Within Smash, there are small pockets of heavyweight success here and there in Brawl, but who are we kidding? It wasn't until Smash 4 the balance was even on the radar, and this is where we find Ryu. Probably the best heavyweight in the series- Oh god damn it, I forgot about Snake. Oh boy, when I first started writing this video, I really wasn't sure how to handle Snake. He definitely meets the big three and is actually heavier than Ganondorf or DDD, but that feels kind of wrong, doesn't it? Snake was originally going to be a much larger character, but was scaled down further into Brawl's development, but whether from deadline pressure, oversight, the programmer's kid at a birthday party that afternoon, his weight was never brought down to line up with his new size. For the record, neither were a lot of his hitboxes, which is why his up tilt does this. Balance. 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 So because this is a video about heavyweight design, and Snake wasn't designed as a heavyweight so much as just is one, and I think most people's idea of a heavy is less him and more. I'm gonna make a slightly controversial call and exclude him. Snake is an anomaly that shouldn't exist and probably can never be repeated and is clearly out of place in the role. Looks fun as all hell on Ultimate though. Good? Good. Now where were we? This is where we find Ryu, probably the best heavyweight in the series along with Bowser and DK showing up as top level counterpicks. 
And you might notice a bit of a common theme running through these guys. They feel kind of cheap. To Smash 4's credit, it did allow heavyweights to claw their way into the meta more than any other game in the series, but it did so by forcing them to rely on a very narrow set of frustrating, overpowered options. Along with Rage, a mechanic that's been a constant source of aggravation since it was introduced. And here's the thing. Even with all of these concessions, Ryu still isn't even a top 10 character, Bowser and DK are rare flashy picks, and the majority of its heavyweights are still almost completely MIA. It's a success story, sure, like dropping everything for Hollywood and getting a line in a soap commercial, but can we really not do better? Icon's Combat Arena is a platform fighter in development with clear roots from Melee, a Smash entry which has overall been very hostile to heavies. So it's interesting that both of the heavyweights in its current roster, Zana and Wei Shan, actually can stand up for themselves, both having reps in the top 10 at the time of this video. And they also do this in very different ways, with Zana being a grappler focusing on powerful throw combos and Wei Shan trading mobility for range. Icons also tries to create stronger heavyweights by normalizing characters across the board. Yes, Zana and Wei Shan are slower than their competitors, but there are no Robin vs Sonic foot races to see here, which is a shame because it's pretty damn funny. And every single character in Icons also has access to gust shielding, an admittedly cool mechanic that gives everyone a uniform way to reduce shield pressure. However, I'd argue balancing characters by making them more similar can be a bit of a slippery slope. You can just keep going in this direction and eventually end up with a bunch of perfectly balanced but equally boring fighters. Now, don't get me wrong here, their approach works, plain and simple. Weishan and Zana aren't boring to play and their developers were never worried about fitting into some YouTuber's thought experiment. While neither Weishan or Zana are top tiers, they're both holding their ground in an extremely fast game, meaning that Wave Dash games actually outdesign Nintendo, not a small feat. That being said, there's still one game I haven't talked about which, in my opinion, has had the most success grappling with heavyweight balance. PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale! <laughs> no. 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 Rivals of Aether has pushed the boundaries of platform fighters considerably, and rather than taking the Smash 4 route of giving heavies a couple of broken tools to lead on, or Icon's no space ogre left behind policy, Dan Fornacci and his team have given some truly bizarre but effective things to their heavyweights in order to improve their options. Universally forget about Icon's gush shielding, Rivals of Aether just took out shields completely, replacing them with a parry system which freezes your opponent in place for a moment if you catch them. And as fun as Rivals is, there are several issues this causes, but the one I want to focus on here is that it homogenizes defense. Things like spacing and angle of attack become less important, and if you get a parry, you're pretty much always going to be following it up with either your best combo starter or strongest kill move. Yep, we're back to this again. The heavyweights of Rivals of Aether definitely aren't complaining though, since their combos and kill moves hit really hard. So while the mechanic overall can be a bit hit or miss, it definitely plays a role in helping heavies compete, in addition to the bizarre movesets I mentioned. The least bizarre, and arguably least effective, is Craig. He has the things you most reasonably expect to see in this archetype. Powerful moves, big hitboxes, super armor, and he's not great. Now keep in mind, this is relative, both Icons and Rivals are far better balanced than Smash, and to an extent, everyone is a viable choice. But crying you can't stop the movement. Craig is, is definitely a meme, not reality. Also go watch Adam Kara, the comedic timing in his editing is legitimately the funniest on YouTube. Unnecessary plugs aside though, we then get to Edelis and Sylvanas, who are, well, weird. They're really weird. Going back to options, Edelis has the double threat of many available at any time, which are also very strong, but he has to enable them. Edelis exerts stage control by coating the ground in ice, which takes him from a big, slow, clumsy old bear to HOLY SHIT IT'S DEATH ON A BELLY! It's a solution that just really doesn't exist anywhere else in the genre. He begins the game as a true heavyweight, but has the ability to fight his way into essentially a different toolset, because remember, a buff to mobility is a buff to everything. He's fast, he's slow, he's got tricks, he's got traps, he's got the only dunk that's literally a dunk, he's… yeah, good job team, he's pretty slick. And then we have Sylvanos, the most Rivals of Aethery Rivals of Aether character who is A, probably the strongest heavyweight ever put in a platform fighter, and B, really, really strange. I like Sylvanos, not only because he looks badass and is genuinely powerful, but also because he really illustrates just how far you need to push a heavyweight in this genre. Going back to the Ganondorf example, remember that he can create a very dangerous threat bubble, but has a lot of trouble actually delivering it to his opponent. 
Sylvanos is also very slow and would have the same issue, except that his bubble looks like this. Sylvanos completely skips the issue of trying to get close to your opponent, meaning that the options he has open to him at any time are diverse, similar to Icon's Wei Shan. The make or break, though, is that Sylvanos tends to have more options available at any given time, and the ones that he does have are usually stronger relative to their games. Yep, that's a combo starter. Yep, that's a kill move. Actually, to a degree, this is true of all heavyweights and rivals, all of which have some kind of ability to exert pressure at a distance. Sylvanos, though, has the most versatile kit to draw from in this regard, and it does the most to offset the pitfalls his playstyle would normally fall into. And even with all this, all these things, he's still not the biggest threat in rivals, but is generally considered very tournament viable and doesn't rely on any frame one invincible insta kills to get there. He's my pick for the best heavyweight design in a platform fighter while also being a lot of fun to use, and hopefully future entries in the genre draw inspiration from what this character has accomplished. So now we return to the title. As we've seen in particular with Icons and Rivals, it is possible to create a heavy fighter which is both balanced and interesting. But their characteristics naturally limit the options they have to work with, and designing around those limitations can be very tricky and takes conscious effort. If you say, well, they're slow, so we'll make them strong, that'll balance out just fine, you end up with, well, the first several Smash games, and even with more attention to detail, they still end up being usable more often than not. Platform fighters are starting to mature as a genre, and with that we are beginning to see more balance between archetypes, heavyweights included. Smash Ultimate looks to be an improvement from Smash 4, which already has the scariest roster so far, and the progress made by their developers has me extremely optimistic for the future of my favorite playstyle. I truly do have hope that someday no player will be held back by anything beyond their own skill, free to choose the avatar that feels like an extension of their own hands. Mostly because I want Ike to be good just one time, man. Come on, pull yourself together. You destroyed a goddess for f**k's sake. Thanks for watching, everyone. And hey, if you liked it, why not leave a like? Be sure to subscribe for more Platform Fighter content and follow me on Twitter at Mr. Mockrock if you want to see what I'm up to. I also just want to give a huge thanks to everyone watching. My stretch goal was to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the summer, and uh, we hit 2,000 in June. No gushing, just thanks for the support. Later, people. Alright, we're doing something a bit more digestible today, a bit more internet-y. Because I've been watching a lot of Smash Ultimate footage, need a way to organize my thoughts, and if there's one thing the internet likes... They did it. They really did it. This alone is enough to make my confidence in Pit just skyrocket, but that's not all our Emperor Sakurai delivered.